This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time now is 427 here on your Friday morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Meredith Merrick. I'm Rafael Pepped Sanchez. Up. It is Friday. You ready? I'm ready. TJ, I'm ready for the weekend. It is payday. A lot of festivals around central Indiana. The weather is pretty good considering it's, you know, late October, so many things to be cheerful about, including our very own Alyssa Donovan. <laughs> Listen, we're wearing blue. We're getting ready for the big game on Sunday. Saturday's going to be great. I mean, let's just go home. Not an ideal, though, weekend forecast, I'd it's say. It's not the best weekend oh, forecast. See, I'm, trying uh, to be, I'm trying to be excited. I know. I, you know, you can be excited mm -hmm. about Sunday, how about? Okay. Okay, because Saturday we do have some rain moving, and we have this Gulf low that's moving up from the south. That's going to bring us quite a bit of rainfall on Saturday, and we could see some storms embedded in there as well in the afternoon. We're looking at up to about two inches, maybe a little bit more of rainfall over the weekend, Saturday and Saturday night. The good news is it's mostly just going to impact your Saturday. So Sunday, just a very small chance of a stray lingering shower. And then we're just gonna see cloudy skies. Temperatures will be into the low 60s by Sunday. So if you're picking a day to go to the pumpkin patch or the apple orchard, yeah. definitely go on Sunday this okay. weekend. Good to know, Alyssa, mm -hmm. thank you. So a lot already happening today and this week. You know, election day is days away, but thousands of Hoosier workers have been voting for days on the future of their jobs at General Motors. Today is the final day to vote on the proposed General Motors contract. The deal would end the ongoing strike that has lasted for more than a month for GM workers, including thousands here in central Indiana. The four-year contract includes pay increases. Union members have until four this afternoon to get this those time of, votes in. Yeah, and so this time of day, we're also focused on what's happening at the bus stop. You will, we'll hear the bus stop forecast, a lot of kids waiting to go to school. This is a matter of safety for kids at the bus stop. A mom in Mooresville has been videotaping drivers ignoring, which I don't understand why, school bus stop arms in her community. And she's especially scared after what we saw happen in Fulton County yeah. almost yeah. one year ago to the day where those three young children were killed. So she's not only talking to the school but local law enforcement about what can be done to make these drivers stop, to make these drivers follow a law That's that it. is now in place. The district is also planning to add some surveillance cameras to the buses, so we'll see what happens. More on this coming up on Good Morning Indiana. And also this weekend, a new Indianapolis will sail into history and join the U.S. Navy. So exciting. Yeah, it's the fourth ship to bear the name USS Indianapolis. It's going to be commissioned at Burns Harbor along Lake Michigan. The vessel can be used for several kinds of missions like mine clearing and anti-submarine action. The most well-known USS Indianapolis was sunk by the Japanese in 1945 while returning from an island where it delivered key parts for the atomic bomb. We'll have more on that story plus news, weather and traffic to kick off your Friday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 4.30 on Good Morning Indiana, a parent is concerned after multiple drivers are caught on camera passing her child's stop school bus. What the school is doing to catch those drivers and improve safety. And today is the last day for union members to vote on a new contract with General Motors, where the vote that could end the ongoing strike stands at this hour. And Indigo is investigating one of its buses after a smell made passengers sick. How one passenger describes that strange odor. 4.30 on your Friday morning. Thanks for starting the day with us. I'm Meredith Barrett. I'm Rafael Sanchez, TGIF. I'm excited. It's going to be a great weekend. I know, listen. It's not the best weather weekend. It's still the weekend. But yeah. But it's still the weekend. I agree with a you. A lot's going on. Yes. And we feel good. Yes. Right? And we look good. Mm -hmm. Makeup helps me. You just guys are look good anyway. We just anyway. wake up just like, this. Out yes. of bed like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? I mean, you know, so what else could you want on a, on a Friday? Nothing. It's all good. You're right. To win the lottery. <laughs> You nailed it. <laughs> so we're starting cool this morning. Okay. It's a little cooler than That's we were right. yesterday. That's and then we right. do have those showers coming in tomorrow. 48 right now in Indianapolis, 45 in Peru, in Tipton. Yesterday we started in the 50s, so a little cooler start today. That's due to that cold front that moved past yesterday. And what's happening next is we have this low moving up from the south. That's going to continue to bring us some moisture as we head through the day tomorrow. Today, just going to see a little bit of cloud coverage, and I should say a lot of cloud coverage throughout your Friday. 
We are going to see a cloudy and gloomy day, not expecting rain showers quite yet from this system, but by this time tomorrow, we are going to see that wet weather move in. So as we head into the evening, we're gonna continue to stay dry and cloudy, and then by tomorrow morning, we do have that system moving in. That's going to move through throughout the day, bringing us showers and maybe a thunderstorm by the afternoon, maybe a couple, but the big thing with this is it is going to bring us quite a bit of rainfall. We're looking at up to two and a half inches of rainfall in some locations by the time that system is through. But for your Friday, we are starting cloudy, staying cloudy throughout the day. Temperatures starting in the 40s will climb just up into the 50s this afternoon. Alyssa, thank you so much at 432 as we take a live look at our in-dot camera now at I-70 at West Street. As you can see, traffic is building this morning. Good morning to Greenwood and Greentown and Greenfield. Since the letter is G, let's go to another camera right now, which is, let's see, this is I-465 at I-74 at 136. They wrote US-136 on the west side, as you can see as well. People are on the go this morning. Have a good day today. As you can tell from Melissa's forecast, it's going to be okay. Meredith? RTV6 is working for you, getting answers about school bus safety after a Mooresville family shared this video with us. It shows cars passing their son's bus while it is stopped with the stop arm out. Kimberly Baker says this happens almost every day. It's something she's even more aware of after the deaths of three children boarding their school bus in Fulton County last year. They want to be proactive, not reactive. And, you know, I don't, I don't want anything to happen to any of our children. It was absolutely heartbreaking. I can't imagine <laughs> going through that. A spokeswoman with Mooresville Schools says they are working with police to step up patrols in the area. Officers were out yesterday morning and afternoon near the bus stop. The district is also testing out a new camera system for its school buses. Baker is taking her push for safety one step farther. She filed a complaint with INDOT asking for signs to alert drivers to the school bus stop. Investigators are revealing new information about the two people killed when their SUV crashed through the wall of a parking garage here in downtown in Indianapolis. The Marion County Coroner's Office says that victims are 70-year-old Iristine Hunt and 73-year-old Charles Hunt from University Park, Illinois. Investigators say their Lincoln SUV hit the left rear corner of another parked vehicle. Then the SUV traveled 20 feet through the side of the garage and fell upside down in an alley below. Police are still investigating what's being called now a very tragic accident. This morning, people living in Henry County are getting ready to open their pocketbook. The county council has passed a new 0.2% inco income tax increase that will fund a new jail. According to the county auditor, that would be $87 per year more for someone who has an annual income of $46,000. The council says the county jail in Newcastle is 40 years old and crowded. The money from the tax aims to build a jail three times the size of the current one and have room for about 300 inmates. They are still working out the details of the jail's construction. The tax will take effect in January and would be in effect for 22 years. So today is the final day for union members to vote on the tentative General Motors contract. That deal would end the ongoing strike that has lasted over a month for GM workers, including thousands right here in central Indiana. The four-year contract would deliver pay increases, uh, keep health care costs the same, and give workers a path to work their way up into upper tier wages. The deal would also save a GM plant near Detroit that was planned to close. Right now that vote stands at about 60% in favor and 40% opposed. Union members will have until four this afternoon to vote on that proposed contract. An Indigo bus is off the roads this morning and an investigation is underway after passengers felt the effects of a strange smell while on board. A man reached out to RTV6 with this strange situation. He says he was on his way to work on an Indigo bus and noticed a bad smell. He started coughing, then other passengers did as well. Even the driver began coughing. He says before taking off, the driver flagged down an attendant who brought over a supervisor who also coughed and sneezed and then opened the windows and told the driver to take off. My problem was is that the bus driver was feeling it, and I kind of thought, you know, you got to drive this bus, and you know, you might run into something if it gets it too intense. He'll pass out or something while he's operating the bus, and there'll be some fatality. 
The man says the passengers on the bus coughed the whole way from downtown Indy to 46th Street on the north side. Even with all the windows down, Indigo says they took this bus out of rotation shortly after the passengers felt sick. They say they are working to determine what may have caused them to feel ill. And this morning, homeowners in Speedway could soon save a lot, I mean a lot of money. In three months, they'll get a choice to opt out of flood insurance. A Speedway began work on the dry run drainage diversion project back in 2015. FEMA has now given initial approval for the BAP because the city built a drainage ditch to hold major rainstorm water. People living in the dry run areas say the change is a relief because their flood insurance costs keep going up every year. We went from an $800 flood insurance payment to over $2,000 in the span of just a couple of years. Although people won't be required to purchase it, Speedway Town leaders are encouraging people to still have flood insurance. They say the rate will be cheaper, and while the chance of area flooding is low, it is still there. The new flood maps will be a ballot starting next year on January the 24th. Take a look at this. Crews are working to remove tons of trash from a home in Evansville. So far, they have removed 22 tons of garbage. Things like a refrigerator, tires, and other items cover the front yard. City crews say they are called at this home twice a year because of the trash pileup. According to family members, the homeowner is in jail and cannot afford the cleanup. With the baseball theme, this is a foul situation. And here are the details. A dad is learning the hard way to have a hard time trusting when they hear something that something is is too good to be true. You see, Sean Richardson is heading to Washington, D.C. with his best friend and their 14-year-old sons for a school trip. Richardson thought it would be fun, be surprised, to take the boys to see the Nationals and the Astros in Game 3 of the World Series. He was surprised, though, how expensive the tickets were on authorized websites. So he checked Craigslist and found four tickets for $2,400. The seller was supposed to send them tickets through the MLB ballpark app. Major League Baseball says that's a secure way to get tickets from a third party. But this Craigslist seller never came through. Not only are we out $2,400, our 13, 14-year-old sons are devastated because we had something pretty special planned for them and now we can't do it. Yeah, that Craigslist seller should be ashamed of himself. A sad situation, but an important reminder that's always a risk to get tickets through sites like Craigslist. It's best to go through authorized websites or third-party sellers, even if the prices are steep. Tens of thousands of people in California are being forced to evacuate as growing fires inch closer and closer to neighborhoods, coming up the damage already done by the fast-moving flames. And we're also checking in on teachers in Chicago. That strike continues, and student-athletes are being kept from competing in state sports competitions. Still ahead on Good Morning Indiana, the lawsuit being filed by parents against the Board of Education. But first, let's check in right now with Alyssa Donovan. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning. We have a cool start to your Friday, and it is going to be a dry but gloomy Friday. But look at this, quite a bit of showers expected coming Saturday. I'll break down everything you need to know coming up. and refined Atlas SE with technology. Good morning on this Friday. The time now is 442 and hello to all my Southsiders in Franklin, Greenwood and Columbus. I-65 at the South Split. It is early in the morning, so if you leave right now, you'll have no problems getting to work because as you can see, hardly anyone is on the road except my couple of dozen friends there <laughs> that are coming in this morning, but all is okay on the interstate system. Here are some stories making national headlines today. Funeral services will be held in Baltimore this morning for Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings. He passed away last week at the age of 68. The Waken funeral will take place at the new Psalmist Baptist Church where Cummings attended for nearly 40 years. Former President Barack Obama is expected to speak at the funeral. And tonight will be game three of the World Series, but the Houston Astros will be without their assistant general manager. The Astros fired Brandon Taubman yesterday for making inappropriate comments at field reporters during a clubhouse celebration. The Washington Nationals are up two games to none against the Houston Astros so far this series. So let's talk about this, a major problem out west. This morning, residents in Southern California are dealing with major fire danger. Tens of thousands of people were forced to evacuate overnight as fast-moving flames burn closer and closer to those neighborhoods. The two largest fires, the Tick Fire in Southern California and the Kincaid Fire in Sonoma County, are less than 10% contained. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. 
overnight wildfire after wildfire raging in California. At least 40,000 people have been ordered to evacuate near Los Angeles as 30 mile per hour winds drive fast moving fires. Basically, force these people out of their homes. The biggest of those blazes, the so-called tick fire, spreading across hundreds of acres in just minutes. These forces in Santa Clarita frantically running in their enclosure as houses around them catch fire. Uh, this might actually be the one instance in which having a garden hose, look at that, was able to put out the palm tree. But Firefighters have to cut their way into this nearby day here after an ember landed on the roof, igniting the building. Meanwhile, in Northern California, the so-called Kincaid Fire has burned at least 16,000 acres in Sonoma County's wine country. Firefighters had to drive through tunnels of flames, trying to get the upper hand while facing winds gusting above 75 miles per hour. We just can't keep ahead of it. Authorities say at least 49 buildings have been destroyed, and thousands of people have been ordered to evacuate. They were really, get out now. Grab your keys and your dogs and go. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. York. And we are starting cool this morning. Those temperatures in the 40s at many locations. Yesterday we started in the 50s, so a bit of a cooler start today. 48 right now in Indianapolis, 46 in Kokomo, and we are at 46 in Bloomington as well. Those winds are light, though. I know we've had some breezy conditions this week, but it has calmed down, and we are just getting ready for that storm that's moving in tomorrow. Today we're starting cool, and then we'll see those cloudy skies throughout the day. We could see a sprinkle or two as well, maybe a light shower, but most of that moisture is staying up in the clouds. We are going to be below average. Those temperatures are in the 50s. So cloudy skies right now. This is all from a low pressure system that's way down to the south. That is streaming down from Texas up to Indiana right now, and that's going to continue to deepen over the next 24 hours as it moves towards Indiana. What it's going to do is bring us quite a bit of moisture throughout our day tomorrow. We could see a stray sprinkle today, maybe a light shower by the afternoon, but most of that activity is going to happen tomorrow morning. And here's a look at the timing because I know you have plans on Saturday. You want to know when's going to be the best time to get outside. It might be a bit of a wash this weekend. So we're starting 430 AM tomorrow morning. Uh, you probably won't be up by then, but by 9 a.m., that's when we're going to start to see those showers moving into those southern counties. And then that will continue to move in throughout the afternoon. Our best chance of seeing maybe a thunderstorm embedded in this system will be in the afternoon. That's also going to be our best chance of seeing some heavier rain showers that are going to move through with this system. Continuing overnight, but the good news is looks like it's going to clear out by our Sunday morning. As this moves through, we are expecting a couple inches of rainfall at many locations. So you can see across the Midwest, we are seeing those t uh, those rainfall uh, t rainfall inches up to about two and a half inches for Fort Wayne, maybe an inch and a half to two inches in Indianapolis. Those lower totals will be to the southeast as of now. Of course, that depends on how quickly that system moves through and if it starts to shift. So Saturday is the day that you are going to be concerned about in terms of any plans. 58 degrees for the high, 61 on Sunday. That's the day you're going to want to make some plans, get outside, because that's going to be our nice weather day for this weekend. Tonight, if you have high school football, it's going to be a pretty nice night. We could see a sprinkle or two, but for the most part, it's just going to be a little cool out there with those cloudy skies. Kickoff, 56 degrees. By the time you're heading home, right around 51 degrees tonight. So taking a look at that seven day today, cloud Cloudy skies, 58 for the high, rain and storms expected for your Saturday, and then 61 on Sunday. Continuing to see some cloud coverage, but it is expected to be a dry day. We could see maybe a stray shower in the morning, but it is going to be a dry Sunday for you, and then a mild start to next week. Alyssa, thank you. We're taking a live look right now at our Traffic Now cameras. This is I-465 at I-74, US-31 on the west side, US-36 that is. And there are just a few people out there getting their day started right now. We're going to take a turn at I-70 west of FedEx. You can see people uh, maybe speeding along <laughs> to catch an early morning flight. Otherwise, no issues to report right now. 
Actress Rose McGowan is now suing trouble film producer Harvey Weinstein. Her attorneys filed a racketeering lawsuit against the Hollywood producer, his former lawyers, and an international private investigations firm. McGowan alleges that Weinstein and his team attempted to discredit her and the rape claim she made against him. The actress accused Weinstein of raping her at the Sundance Film Festival back in 1997. She is one of more than 80 women to make allegations against him. Weinstein has denied all of those allegations. Former President Jimmy Carter has been released from the hospital after a fall earlier this week. Carter was being treated for a minor pelvic fracture after he fell in his Georgia home. His spokesperson says he will be recovering now at home. This is the second time Carter has fallen this month and had to be hospitalized. At the age of 95, he is the oldest living U.S. president. We wish him well. At 449, 15 parents of Chicago high school athletes, they filed a lawsuit against the city's Board of Education because of that teacher strike. And they say it's preventing their children from taking part in state series competitions. Football, soccer, volleyball, tennis, and cross country teams are being affected. A policy with the Illinois High School Association says that schools are not allowed to compete in the competition while teachers are on strike. As some teams have already missed the first round of qualifying competition. Appeals through the IHSA have not gone through and now parents are turning to the courts. And they filed an emergency complaint which would allow or could allow I should say their children to compete in those competitions. Young men and young athletes are being in a way punished and we're hoping that they see and, and they understand what our appeal is about. 26,000 CPS teachers in Chicago and 8,000 support staff workers are still on strike. Schools have also been canceled since the protests began last week. A cartoon-themed truck is making its way to Indianapolis tomorrow. After the break, the adorable treats you can find at the Hello Kitty Cafe. I never thought I'd have to look for another job, but... Here we go. Mm-hmm. Training to land a job after a plant closing. Why hundreds of thousands of dollars are being left on the table. A hiring Hoosiers call six investigation coming up at six right here on Good Morning Indiana. But first, let's check in on Court TV. I'm Seema Iyer, and coming up today on Court TV, we are live for every moment in the killer girlfriend murder trial. Prosecution's case is winding down, and we're looking ahead to what the defense might have in store. The big question, will Ezra McCandless take the stand in her own defense? Does she have to testify in order to explain the chain of events that resulted in the death of Alex Woodworth? We'll bring you all the latest today on Court TV. Look at that, look at that, Court TV supporting the Colts. Look at that, Court TV supporting the Colts. Don't forget you can watch the all new Court TV live on your mobile device by visiting CourtTV.com. We'll be right back. Foil made in the USA since 1947. Get ready, Hello Kitty fans. The Hello Kitty Cafe is on its way to Indianapolis. The theme truck will stop in Indy on its trip around the country tomorrow. It features adorable sweet oh. treats, including mini cakes, macaroons, and cookies. There is also Hello Kitty merchandise on sale. New this year are Hello Kitty canvas totes, cushions, and pin sets. Each guest who stops by and spends $25 on food will get a free pink mini tote while supplies last. The truck is scheduled to park at Castleton Square Mall at the South entrance near J.C. Penny. It will be there from 10 to 8 tomorrow. So get there on time, Meredith. Okay. Get your tote. A very different kind of Olympic competition was held in Las Vegas this week. Hundreds of men and women there in the hospitality industry, they competed. Yes. Oh, and they danced what? as well. What? In the housekeeping <laughs> Olympics. There we go, there we go. And they went head to head in a fast bed making contest, the confetti vacuuming showdowns, and a toilet paper toss competition. It was <laughs> held at Mandalay Bay on Wednesday. Awards were given out for both team and individual participants. If those folks want to come to my that house, not doing a good job. they are welcome. But listen, I would put up whomever was competing there with our Indiana folks because I know I do a lot of work with Visit Indy and we have thousands of people that work right here in downtown Indy and throughout central Indiana in our hotels, motels and restaurants. 
our team can beat your team. I'm just saying, you don't want to send us to Michael Bay. That yeah. is one yeah. job where folks do not get enough thanks for. They do I mean, not. that so is thank you. a hard job to do. All right, someone with an easier job today, yeah. Alyssa Donovan. Well, you know, it, it's easy because Saturday's kind of a wash, Sunday's the day to get outside. Okay. So when you talk about easy, it's pretty easy. Today, cloudy skies, 58 degrees for the high. Tomorrow, rain and showers. Sundays are dry day, 61 degrees for the high.